Next into the den are university pals turned business partners, Rebecca Joy and Natalie Deanna. Deep breath. We always knew that we were going to work together. There was something innate, I think, inside that we just knew we wanted to do that. We've just got an energy between us that we wanted to put into a company. It's a handbag. A vegan, non-leather handbag business. Been there. Came out very wounded. <laughs> But could there be more to Rebecca and Natalie's range of vegan-friendly fashion accessories than meets the eye? As far as we're aware, nobody else is putting erotic stories in handbags. Not only that, but we're managing to bring a luxury element to something that isn't animal leather. Hello, I'm Rebecca, and this is my business partner, Natalie. We're looking for £50,000 in exchange for a 10% share in our business, a conscious luxury vegan handbag brand, Frida Rome. Frida Rome was born out of a desire to create accessories for a new breed of consumers who want luxury but don't want to compromise on their ethics. All of our products are entirely vegan. They're made using progressive, eco-conscious materials and currently made in Britain. We are the brand for bad girls who do good things. We have a completely unique offering, as each of our bags contains an erotic story chapter. It's a great conversation starter and a little reminder of the rebel side of the woman who wears it. We launched our first product, the weekend handbag, crossbody, in October 2020. In the first 30 days of its launch, we made £33,000. To date, we've sold nearly 300 weekend handbags in just seven months of trading. We hope to build a cult following of customers who want to engage with us beyond our products. Thank you for listening. We invite you to take a look at some of our products and we welcome your questions. Vegan handbags with an X-rated twist. It's made with cactus leather. Are the offering from Rebecca Joy and Natalie Deanna. It uniquely deconstructs so you can pack it flat, protect it. Who are seeking £50,000 in return for a 10% share of their business. Said you. Rebecca and Natalie believe their product is unique. But will fashion mogul Tuka Suleiman view their new handbag as old hat? Ladies, um, I had a bag brand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know a lot about bags. And there's nothing new about vegan bags. Mm -hmm. So explain to me what the material is made of that makes it progressive, eco-friendly, okay. as you said. So, historically, faux leathers that you would have seen out on the market were a lot of PVC. A lot of them used a lot of solvents in them. Where this particular leather sits in the market is what's known as more plant-based leathers, yep. made from cactus, as well as recycled cotton or recycled polyester backing on that particular material. So, it's not 100% sustainable, but you're going in the right direction. That's right. I can't help but open up and inside, you've got a message and it says, she looked up, beckoning him to take her. Still holding <laughs> onto his neck, she gripped him tighter. He came face to face with her and paused for the last time. <laughs> and it goes on. It does. it does, yes. What's the idea behind that? Give me an idea. Me and Nat have been friends for a long time and we just have a certain energy between us and we're not particularly shy. And we wanted to put something of us in the bag. Our personality. And we'd love to say it was more thought out, but Nat just said, we're going to put an erotic story in the bag and I'm going to write it. And I went, I love it. As I thought to myself as a customer, I would love to meet a brand that just took a bit of a difference, did something different. It's very different. Thank you. The handbag entrepreneur's left field USP appears to have intrigued Peter Jones. She's already an advocate of a plant-based lifestyle, but now Deborah Meaden wants to find out more about the duo's competition. Who are the main brands that you think you're competing against? It's been so difficult to find people that do something like this. Everything's very simple and French mm. and nice, which is also nice, but I don't want to buy them. I know what you mean, because I've actually been buying vegan bags for 15 years, but all of them, they're not quite right. Yeah. 
Well, I saw you smelling that bag as well. That's an interesting <laughs> thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we discovered cactus leather in 2019. Nobody knew about right. it then. We had samples of other fruit leathers, as you may, and they smell like fish. It's why I smelt them. I can smell a vegan bag a mile off, you know, it's, it's not good. Now, I love so much about this bag. However, I'm slightly puzzled by the erotic message. Only because sometimes you can say too much and it feels a little bit to me like this stands on its own. Mm -hmm. I have to say that I disagree. I look at this through a marketing lens, right? And I see so many cool products that have no brand story at all. But I think having some kind of compelling, provocative edge is going to be key, or else as a marketeer, I have nothing to work with. Mm -hmm. So how do you go about building a brand and not just a nice product? Well, we have a risque concept we wanted to go with, something that would potentially go viral. You know, you've got woman there, dressed nice, maybe, you know, white shirt, you know, and she's sort of tapping a riding crop that ties into you, Deborah. I think you like horses, don't you? <laughs> Can I hear the story before you tie me into Fair it? Enough. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. I'll leave you out. I'll leave you out. <laughs> the camera zooms out and it reveals an entirely naked physical form of a man. And the tagline is, the only hide we're tanning this year or the only hide we're tanning this Christmas. So mm. it's a risque play on the fact that we're not using animal leathers. I've got vegan, I've got erotic, I've got adventurous. Is that kind of what you're going for? Yeah. If sex really does sell, then Rebecca and Natalie's near the knuckle marketing campaign could attract customers in their droves. But Sarah Davies is keen to discover just how big the pair feel their vegan handbags could actually be. Can you just talk me through the scale of the market opportunity that you feel like you've identified? Just give me a little bit of comfort around okay. that size of opportunity. In terms of vegan fashion, just the women's wear alone, in 2019, it reached a value of about 397 billion. But that's all fashion. Yes. We're talking about a subset of that, which yes. is just bags. Yes. We're talking about a subset of that, which is just this style of bag. Yep. And we're sub talking about a subset of that, that like erotic novels. I mean, I love niche businesses. I've made my millions in niche businesses, but that is something else. But we like to think we have got something that is unique. The point that you think is going to sell you above all else is... The erotic story. The erotic story. So what you get, it also makes it a collector's item, so you hopefully would get the whole collection and you'd have a different story every time. But then we're currently building a secret website where you get the whole story rather than just the chapter. Right. This whole business feels very, very self-indulgent. Huh. Not our intention. And my worry is, you can go and be self-indulgent with your money, but with my 50 grand, no chance. I won't be investing. I'm out. OK. Rebecca and Natalie have lost their first dragon, as Sarah Davies fails to buy into their particular vision for the future of animal skin-free fashion. Tuka Suleiman has previous experience with a bag business, so will the sector-savvy dragon be tempted to offer up his cash? Ladies, I think you guys would be great to work with. Unfortunately, the bag market is a difficult market. Mm -hmm. And my experience, women either want a 30 pound or a 50 pound bag, or they want a 1,000 pound bag. That middle end struggles, especially when you're targeting a certain type of person. I'm looking for a return on my investment, and I can't see one here. So I'm out. Rebecca and Natalie, I really like the product. And I do see before me a nice, small, quite cottage-based boutique type of business, which is something to be proud of. The bigger, wider market attacking some of the premium brands, I think that that's going to take quite a lot of capital and investment to really get it going. And there's a nice story to it, and yet I'm not sure that it's going to give a decent enough return. 
So, I'm sorry, it's not something I'm going to invest in, so sadly, I'm out. A second and third dragon have now declined the deal. Deborah Meaden may be Rebecca and Natalie's most natural investor, but do their products have sufficient X factor to outweigh her reservations concerning their built in sex factor? It's difficult for me because I love the bag, the design, the feel of it, that's lovely. But the erotic story for a big section, I think, is going to put them off. As a lot of vegans want to say, I am a stylish vegan. They don't want to shout, and I love Fifty Shades of Grey. And I actually don't disagree with Stephen, although he said he disagreed with me. I actually agree with the story. That is too much of a story for me. Mm -hmm. And that's put me off. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry, but I won't be investing. I'm out. Four dragons down, and Rebecca and Natalie's hopes of securing an investment now hang by the slimmest of threads. Only Stephen Bartlett remains. So has the Sultan of Social Media spotted an opportunity his fellow dragons have missed? As a marketeer, especially in a saturated market, especially online, it's not enough just to have a good product, right? Mm -hmm. And my real expertise is understanding how to build a real cult following behind a brand and turn that into sales. Mm -hmm. And hopefully build tens of millions of followers online. And with you, I think I can see a story there to tell and one that would bring you closer to the brand. Yeah. And then I also like you two as entrepreneurs. Okay. I really do. And I think I'd enjoy working with you. So I am going to make you an offer. I'm going to offer you all of the money for 20% of the business. We don't even need to discuss I don't think it we because need we'd to. love to work with you. And we can take 20%. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, amazing. Thank you. Well, well done, guys. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Everybody. Everybody. Thank you. Success for Rebecca and Natalie, who leave the den with the £50,000 they were originally seeking, having bagged the backing of a dragon with the brand building expertise to take their business to a whole new level. I've got a very good feeling for Stephen. As a person, I think he embodies the same ethics as we do and energy. I can see the headline now. Stephen Bartless invests in erotic handbag business. <laughs> I think we can build a really, really cool, culturally relevant brand over a long period of time. I put money on the fact you'll be appearing in the advert. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to crack open a few bottles of champagne. Vegan-friendly <laughs> champagne, here we go.